put up the picture of him and his non-black wife, I noticed that he started to get real uncomfortable. And he started saying, em putting emphasis on the fact that they were together for a long time. We were together in grad school. We were broke. He emphasized that. And I watched his body language. I watched his face. And I could tell that he was uncomfortable. And one of the reasons why I know that a lot of these black men that do this, and he's real dark skinned, they're uncomfortable, is because they know that deep down inside, deep down inside, although they may never admit it, they know, they know they done did us wrong. I mean, go back and watch, I watched that Wendy Williams interview, and I did watch the one on The Breakfast Club, and it was a different energy from him. The one on The Breakfast Club, it was like, okay, because he, he was interviewing with Charlemagne, okay, you interviewing with a black man who was... I feel was more partial to you and then Wendy Williams you you interviewing with a black woman and you kind of don't know what it's gonna go and all of a sudden she puts up the picture of your you and your white wife and you make sure that you immediately start talking about how long y'all was together you make sure that you immediately start talking about how y'all was broke and to grad school student but none of that could compensate for the fact that you and you're a very dark-skinned black man you are a very dark skinned black man. None of that can compensate for my pain as a dark skinned black woman, seeing another black man leave black women, particularly dark skinned black women. It's a real shame, you know, and, I, and I, I'm a try. I'm, I watched him and I kind of, I, when you watch people, sometimes you kind of feel you feel some type of way about the person. And I kind of felt like, okay, this guy comes across as a nice person. And you kind of you, you, you kind of just want to say, I don't know. It's, it's just so fucked up how some of our black men do us. And how they're not understanding how we feel. A lot of us feel as black. Let me speak for myself. Because y'all be saying, oh, Rashida, da, da, da. But I'm talking about me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about Rashida. When I watched it, I'm just saying to myself, another, here's another handsome, intelligent, upstanding black man, dark skin. He's very dark skin, very handsome, very articulate. And we've lost you. You're gone. You're gone. And I know you feel guilty. Go back and watch that video, y'all. And you'll see what I'm saying. It wasn't a level of comfort. You gliding and skipping on through there. You talking fast. You're emphasizing how long y'all been together. That don't mean nothing to me. I don't give a damn if y'all been together since birth. Your behavior is betrayal. Your behavior is treacherous. And in the interview with uh, The Breakfast Club, I wrote down some of the stuff you said. You said you love your sisters. You don't love your sisters. You don't love your black women because the true expression of, 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 of self-love in terms when we talk about the relationships and marriage and dating is in the reflection of who you marry. You don't have real love, Mike Coulter. I'm speaking about the actor. I'm sorry, y'all, because I just want to get right into it because I just finished watching some of these videos of him, this footage of him speaking, and it was highly emotional for me to see this handsome, black, dark-skinned man not with a beautiful black woman. And I, it's, it's so loaded. It's so loaded for me. He comes on there claiming that he has on The Breakfast Club, he loves his sisters. He comes on there talking about how he was with this woman for 16 years you know as if to say you couldn't have done all of this with a a black dark-skinned woman a black woman in general and a dark-skinned woman in particular you couldn't have you mean to tell me out of the millions of black women on earth you couldn't have done any of this stuff with it this, this is the fucking excuses that they make over and over again y'all and they want us to just understand you know he said i'm a human being I was a struggling grad school student. What else did he say? She held me up. Love is love. These are the same 
tired ass excuses that we hear from these men over and over and over again. It never stops. Over and over and over again. And they just expect us as black women in general, dark skinned women in particular, to take it, to accept it and say, okay, I understand. You know, all the while while the black family is being destroyed, you know, all the while while we're losing our men, a lot of our men are in prison. You know, a lot of our men are being displaced due to all the different political and social and economic situations that we've suffered in this country being black. We're supposed to just understand that love is love. I was with her when I was a struggling grad student. She held me up when I was down. We supposed to understand Mike Coulter. We supposed to understand. And not only are we supposed to understand, we supposed to support you and watch your, your uh, Luke Cage, that's the series. That's by the way, based in Harlem. Like it's based in Harlem. And I noticed when I watched a couple of the, um, the trailers for it, I watched some of the trailers, I'm saying to myself, here we go time and again, we got, why, why do we have, why don't we have a, a fully black cast, a visibly black cast? You got the black man. See, that's the thing. That's the contradiction. They always seem to find a place for the dark skinned black man. This is darkism, y'all. Darkism. Mike Coulter, <laughs> you're committing darkism. You can try to cover it up and dress it up and sound all sweet and ooh, ooh wah all you want, but it's darkism. You're a traitor. Yeah, you're a traitor. I don't care. I don't care what you try to say to justify it. You are a traitor. Okay, let's get that clear. Moving right along. When they uh, bring these, like I was going, making the point of, they make these movies that's based on black life in a black, historically black community it's the the black woman is shut out. Yeah, I know Alfre Woodard is on the series, you know, but uh, uh, who is it? The actress uh, Ro Rosario Dawson, that's her name. She's supposed to. I, it's unclear who she is to him in terms of relationship wise. But I always notice that they'll take like a fully looking black man, and they'll take a woman that you could tell that she's not black. She's not dark skinned. She's not a black woman. And they'll put the woman in a situation with the black man that it's, it's insinuating some type of relationship. It's insinuating that they might be together. You know what I'm saying? And that's the, that's the feel that I got when I watched the trailer. Um, it wasn't clear if that was his girlfriend or that's his wife or who she is to him. Um, I think that I read somewhere that she was playing like the nurse but it was insinuating a kind of romantic, close relationship. And I'm saying, why can't that be, why, why can't you see that relationship going on with a black man and a black woman, a fully black woman, a black woman that looks like me? What's the problem? You can give a role like this to a dark, I mean, this man is dark skin, the, the real dark skin. He, and he, and by the way, I'm just going to say it. He is so super fucking handsome. He is so gorgeous. I mean, that smooth, dark, it's, it's just a shame that you didn't get with a, a, a black woman that looks like me to make some more beautiful, chocolate, dark-skinned black babies. It's just a shame. It's just a shame that, you know, a lot of these black men are engaged in genocide. They're participating in genocide. It's a shame that we won't get to see offspring that look like you. I mean, the authentic you, Michael Coulter, it's a shame. But you expect us to be understanding. You expect your people, you expect to come on to a radio show talking about I love my sisters. Try to, you know, as, as some type of consul fucking lation prize. That's not a consolation. That's not a consolation to me. Like I said, if you really love black women, then you would have married one. You would have married one. And you still could have went on and handled your business with your career i do understand that his wife is some type of executive if y'all got some information put the information down below but i understand that his wife is an executive of some sort at netflix you know 
and I do under you know, I was talking to a friend of mine and he was telling me that he told me about the actress Lena Horne and why she didn't uh deal with black men this is what he was telling me how true this is I don't know but I'm sharing this with y'all and he said that one of the things that he heard in an interview from her was that a, a black man could not take her to the places that a white man could take her to and that's one of the main reasons why she was with white men and i just kind of you know that sentiment kind of rings here in this situation i don't know if that's if that's the if that's the case here because he claims that they've been together since grad school when they was poor and broke you know that's his that's his claim that's his assertion you know but it, it, all these dynamics come into play here, folks, when we talk about this concept that I've been telling y'all about, darkism. And this is darkism to me, clearly, because this man is committing, in the book I talk about uh, dark-skinned people committing darkism against themselves. This is a clear example. It happens in marriage and dating. This is a, Michael Coulter is a, 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 a dark-skinned man who has committed darkism, discrimination against dark-skinned women in terms of mar his marriage choice yeah that's how i see it that's my take on it and he's tried to he's tried to be nice about it because he's tried to be i don't want to say i don't know what the word is nice but he's tried to kind of kind of put a bandage over it because i felt i feel like he knew that he was going to get some type of uh backlash once people found out just like that guy's yeah, kendrick lamar can't stand him you know, I can't stand him. He's, he's still a fake. But you Kendrick Lamar fans out there, he's still a fake. He's still a fraud. Yep, it ain't changed. Most of them are. They're frauds. But he kind of he kind of knew. I think he kind of knew that he was going to get some type of backlash. And so he kind of tried to, you can could, you could see how he tries to kind of bandage it up. You know, it's almost as if, on the Wendy Williams show that he knew that this line of questioning was going to take place. So it's kind of like he was prepared for it. Go watch that video and watch his body language. But he was still uncomfortable when he was addressing it. I noticed that. And again, I think it goes back to deep down inside, you know, you know, you're committing darkism. You're committing darkism against your own women. You know and I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, man, I'm, it, it, it's, it's very painful to me. It's as, as a black, dark skinned black woman, it is very painful to me to see my black, dark skinned men constantly not choose me, the reflection of me. It's painful to me. And for you haters, I'm speaking for Rashida. I'm telling you how I feel about the situation. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's fair. It's not an excuse in the world. All this, we love who we love. Um, what else he said? She held me up. I'm just a human being. All, all these are fucking excuses, folks. I, my question is, what is so wrong with black men, dark-skinned black men, and black women, particularly dark-skinned black women, stand together? What is so wrong? It's almost as if it's a crime. It's a crime to see that happen. I could just imagine the haters, the background haters that hate on uh, couples like Denzel and Pauletta Washington. Hate, and they probably hate on him in the background because same thing with Samuel L. Jackson. You got a few of these very uh, famous and wealthy black men who have dared to marry the reflection of them. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just not understanding why some of these black men continue to throw us under the bus to throw the dark-skinned black women under the bus i'm not understand i am understanding it but y'all know what i mean it's, it's 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 just so upsetting to me and one of the main reasons why it's upsetting to me because i'm always in the back of my mind i'm always thinking about the next generation i'm always thinking about what is going to happen to the unborn uh, black girls, dark skinned black girls, b uh, black boys, what's going to happen to them if this keeps going on? Are we going to even continue to have dark skin? 
Think about that, folks. Are we going to continue to have the kinky hair? The real reflection of black. Don't tell me about no one drop rule. Because if you watch my video, you know I don't subscribe to no one drop rule. That's the baby daddy rule. I don't subscribe to that. So don't tell me about that. I'm talking authentically black. Dark skin with kinky hair. The real black. The real reflection of black. That looks like Michael Coulter. He's actually the real reflection of black. This man is drop dead gorgeous to me. And it, it, it's... It's, it's, it's just, it's so, I am so fucking disappointed, y'all. A lot of people sent me information. I did not know who he was. I went and did my research. You know, he's, he's um, uh, playing the actor or the character Luke Cage. And I went and did some research and I just looked at this man, watched his video, his, uh, the footage of him in his interviews. And I'm saying to myself, damn, another one, another one, another one does this to us. Another one betrays us. Another one bites the dust, if you will. And it's just so completely disturbing and so messed up. It's so upsetting. And I can't believe that this man would not expect black. How, why? I don't understand why people don't expect black women to be upset. Why do you get, why do people get mad? I noticed that some people, they get upset when black women get upset because their black men are leaving them. I don't understand why you why are you mad. I'm the victim here. I, as a dark skinned woman, am the victim. I am the victim. So as the victim, I have a right to be upset about my victimization. That's it. I don't want to talk about him no more. I made this video to let you guys know how I feel about this situation. And, and now you know how I feel. Now you know how I feel. Real quick announcement. I'm going to be in uh, Dallas. I'm sorry, Fort Worth. This man got me all kind of... <laughs> I'm going to be in Fort Worth, Texas on November 12th. It's going to be two shows. The information, y'all probably already saw the flyer. Um, put the information below in the description box. I'm also looking for more venues. So if you want me to come to your city, help me find a venue looking for partnership deals. Um, you can email me at darkskinisbeautifulcampaign at gmail.com. Dark skin is beautiful campaign at gmail.com. Donate to the Dark Skin is Beautiful campaign. The link is going to be below. And I want y'all to get this book, Darkism, 25 Ways That Dark Skin People Are Discriminated Against. And I want to thank every single person that has purchased the book, that has donated, that has shared my videos. Whatever you've done, nothing is too great or too small. I appreciate all of y'all's support. I love y'all to death. I want y'all to know that. And that's it. I will talk to you guys again soon. And that is my take on Michael Coulter, who is playing the character Nicolas Cage. Another one bites the dust. Maybe he'll come back, though. Who knows? It's always hope. He might come back to black. We'll see. We'll see.